Hey, Hey, happy campers. campers. Welcome back to Camp Shady Birch. It is week 28 here at Camp Shady. Can you believe that? I know, campers. And we have some really difficult news. Um, As some of you know, we never expected to go on this long because Camp Shady Birch is only a two-week camp. And we're on week 28, campers. And none of your parents have come back to pick you up. Not not a single one. We're getting new campers every single week, but this isn't. Wh- where are the parents? We haven't gotten paged. We haven't gotten emailed. No fax. Nothing. And Sandwich has already adopted ninety eight of you. Yeah. And there are six thousand left on the waiting list. And he's working as fast as he can, but you know his previous legal challenges. It's an issue. You guys have been here for Christmas. Easter's coming up. So if you could call your parents and just say, "Hey, are we coming home soon?" But if not, we will file the um, the complete adoption and we'll adopt all of you because yeah. we love you so much. We're going to have to get some more honey-baked hams. Oh, we're running low, guys, and canned peas. God, I hate Easter food, but that's another story for another time. Anyways, mm-hmm. welcome back to the podcast. Thanks for joining us this week. We just got <laughs> back. <laughs> from guess where? Look at our t-shirts. Oh, no. We love a theme. We I fucking know. love a theme. We just came back from Disney World. Ooh. We talked about it two weeks ago, maybe last week, too, that yeah. we were doing another influencer trip to Disney. Right. And this one was very different and very fun in all different types of ways. And we're really excited to talk to you today about it. Yeah. Um. So, basically, I got an email about a month ago being like, hey, Zachariah, we really want you to come back to Disney and do another trip with us. This one, the big theme is hashtag all the Disney thrills. And they have this new Tron ride coming out which is based off of that Tron movie Mm -hmm. and it's like a roller coaster that you sit in a motorcycle like styled seat and the whole trip kind of revolves around promoting Disney like big rides right right? Mm -hmm. and it was really fun but it was a lot different of a trip than the one that we did on episode one right was yeah oh my god that was episode one we had just come back from the first trip and we talked about that in the first episode ever of Camp Counselors Mm -hmm. and now 28 weeks in that silly little mouse brought us back. <laughs> yeah, we had the first trip. It was, I would say, maybe like 15 people. 15 people, for sure. And this time around, there was probably a, a total of 100. Yeah, I would say hovering a little bit over 100 people. Yeah, so, it was a lot. But yeah, it was fun. It was fun. The crowd was just a mixed bag, if mm-hmm. you will. Like, the, like it wasn't just comedians. It was a lot of family vloggers, a lot of Twitch streamers. Yeah, a lot, a of, lot of food people. Yeah. Yeah, and we had a great time, but we it was, just, uh, like last trip, it was like very close knit because it was the same people. And this one, it was a little bit easier because everyone was so spread out the entire time right. that we really enjoyed it. And I think there was so much talk about the trip and there's no way that we can cover it all on one episode for like the intro of like our whole episode. So Jonathan put together a 17 minute hysterical <laughs> video vlog that's on our Patreon. I was like pissing myself watching it this morning with you because you did such a good job. You like really take all this stuff and put it together in the most ridiculous way. So that's over on patreon.com slash camp counselors if you want more stuff. Mm-hmm. But on today's episode, I think we're just going to cover some of our favorite moments. Not all yeah. of them because they're all on Patreon, <laughs> but some moments that we think that you guys would love to listen about a story tell. So where, where do you want to begin, let's, John? Let's begin at the very beginning. I think that's a great place to start. Typically, you start at the beginning, so I like where your head's at. Thank you so much. <laughs> so we were at the airport, and we were waiting for in Florida, and mm-hmm. we were waiting for our bus to come pick us up. And there's a girl in front of us, and the line next to us, and they're all like, the, all the girls are looking and snickering and pointing at the girl who's in front of us, and you're like, oh, I think that that's the girl from High School Musical. I, I couldn't really get a good look at her, and she had two kids, and I was like, oh, I don't, I don't know, because at this point, we didn't know who was going to be on the trip, and she turned around, lo and behold. It was High School Musical's Martha Cox in the flesh. Her real name is Casey Stroh. She's the girl that's in the first movie that like pop locks and drops it. And she's in the cafeteria and she's like, but I want to pop, but I want to lock. What is she saying? She says, I want to pop, lock, jam and break. And guess what? She is still pop locking and jamming and breaking to this day. She's like huge on TikTok. Yeah. She's like over 3 million followers. Yeah. And she dances and she's and she looks the same. She's aged beautifully. And oh my God, what a sweetie. So when we get on the bus, she was on the same bus as us. And we were sitting and I did vlog this part where we were like, oh my God, the girl from High School Musical is behind us. I can't believe like we're on the same bus as her. And then we get to the hotel, the first hotel we were at. And I was like, oh my God, she's staying at the same hotel well, as us. Back up for a minute. I told you on the bus while I was whispering and it's in the vlog. You can see the footage. I said, she's a dancer. 
And then you looked at me and said, she has cancer. I and miss I said, her. No, she's a dancer. <laughs> I definitely miss her that. It's like, oh my God. No, she doesn't have cancer, you guys. She's yeah. just a dancer. But we saw her at the hotel and we knew it was her. But we were we were playing coy. Yeah, we were playing cool. We were playing coy. We were playing um, cool, calm, and collected. That didn't last for very long. But then we ended up meeting her and her husband and her kids and like hanging out with her. We were on the same floor in the hotel. I was like, wow, she's very normal, very friendly. Yeah. So let me give you a little tip, campers. When you want to talk to somebody, this can work for anybody. Anyone you want to be friends with, anyone you want to converse with that you're like, you admire, right? So instead of going up to her and being like, oh my God, such a huge fan, because then it's just that dynamic of like, then the other person is just really like, oh, thank you so much and it's kind of like where do you go from there it's like right. you've established some sort of like, like kind hierarchy of yeah hierarchy. there's a difference and there's no need for hierarchy in anyone's life guys okay everybody is a human everyone has a right to talk to whoever right but I don't want to set that standard because I know I know that standard so we saw her in Animal Kingdom and we were doing this like private showing of the Lion King and the whole group was and she was kind of like walking towards it and she was with her kids and we were kind of early too and we were kind of like mingling about and then I like looked over at her and I was like oh my god it is so hot today and she was like oh my god you're telling me and she's the most beautiful long hair and she's like look at me hair's up in a bun the kids have been sweating all day and i was like i know right it's so swampy down here yeah. and and then we were kikis we were kikiing because we just kind of like met on that like inner level mm -hmm. um but we got to see her content after and she killed it she did, and just knowing that she's like so nice so like, sweet one she, of the nicest people i've met she lives in utah now oh does she i, I overheard her say that she had you a, were a spying good, yes i was mm -hmm. there was a lot of energy that was kind of just like i don't know like uh, like still stagnant energy on the trip i felt like some people i'm gonna be honest some people were not giving disney energy like we do yeah and a lot of people were kind of just dry like i don't know if it's her content i don't know if it's some people she, casey was not dry she was a ball of fun everywhere Soaked. she went a ray of sunshine if you will yeah and that girl was getting stopped left and right and i said okay martha is a star and then oh my god Guess what she did? What did she do? A flash mob. Was I not talking about that in the last episode? Was Jonathan not just talking about his love of flash mobs? And I was kind of like, ew. Um, but you love them. I love that. And she did. And we would have been invited. Okay. If we were now wait. Now wait, go, wait, wait. Hold go. on. We made new friends on this trip as well. Um, they actually live in New York, Clay and Chris. And they're yes. in the background of this video. And it kind of, they look like a movie version of us. Like a much more attractive version of yes. us. Yes. They're gay Broadway dancers. They look like if Jonathan and I had a movie cast about us, they would cast them to play us because the hotter versions of us. Yeah. But on the comments on Casey's video, which hit like 1.5 million likes. Go off, Casey. She, yeah, no, she was the star of the trip and she had the star video. She got and in the comments, people were tagging us saying like, I see Zachariah and Jonathan. I see at Zachariah Porter and at Jonathan them. Carson. And I may have liked one or two. Because you, you know why? You were like they them. are, they're Broadway dancers and they killed it. And I said, I I'm did. just going to like one and I'm not going to endorse any more of it. It was not us. I didn't comment. I know, I know. But I wish that we would have been enjoyed it because they, hey, if we would have been invited because they did such a good job and I'm like we low key a little jealous. We could have handled that choreography. I am so jealous. They did their they did the high school musical classic like we're all in this together in front of the castle and that choreo is in my wheelhouse. I could have handled that and had we had been like in like the inner mixings of that group we could have gotten it but also to be fair can I play devil's advocate for a minute? I wish you would. Everybody in that group was a dance themed account. True. So she really did recruit all the dancers. And a lot of people don't look at me and say, that's a dancer. I do. But my, yeah, because you know me, you know my core. I was born like footloose, okay? Footloose and fancy free. And I don't think she knew I was a dancer, but I was, I am a dancer, classically trained. And I wish I was a part of it, but we weren't, but we're really proud of her. And sorry, to get off Casey's, get off Casey's train right here. Get out of Casey's corner. There was another Disney celebrity on the trip. And this is, a, you can take this one. So when we started the trip, I looked at this man and I said, he looks so familiar. And I was like racking my brain because on these trips, it's like, have I seen you on the internet? Do yeah. I know you? Like, what do I know you from? Of course. So I'm like trying to figure it out. And then I asked him like, is that him? And you were like, no, absolutely not. Are you kidding me? I was like, okay, you're probably right. <laughs> so then the next day we get on the bus and I'm looking at him again. I'm like, Zach, are you like, I think that that's him. Are you sure that's him? And you're like, no, absolutely not. He was so much shorter in the movie. You look up on your phone, you said, hey, that's him. It was Zero from Holes. Guys, Zero from Holes, the, the, the main character other than Shia LaBeouf. But in my defense, he was taller than you. Babe, the movie came out in like 1942. He was like 10 years old. It came out in like 2002. But the thing is, he was a teenager. He must have been old, like at least 13. What do you have, a, a nine foot growth spurt when he turned 18? Like get over yourself. He was a kid. He was I, like nine. I'll tell you this. 
You look at photos of me at 12 years old, I think I've grown about four inches, okay? I didn't grow far. I didn't keep I going. Well, that's coming from a short king. What do you think about other people? I I wish that would have happened to me. It didn't happen to me. He was cool. Yeah, he, we didn't really talk to him. Yeah, his, he was, he I'm going to be nice. honest. I'm going to be, actually, you know what? I'm going to hold my opinions. For Patreon. Yeah, actually, because, listen, listen, this is a public forum, and I want to keep getting invited back on these Disney trips, so I have to keep kind of keep my opinions about everything kind of, like, even keel. Yeah. But I think, we talked about this on Patreon already, we want to do this thing where you can, like, basically email us or comment on the Patreon or the YouTube episode any questions you have about influencer trips, anything, like, down low or, like, on the side that people don't talk about, and we're going to do a video next week on Patreon on of all these question and answers and we're gonna like tell you our opinions about things just so there's a long behind a paywall because i don't want to find it yeah i feel a little more safe over there about the things we're gonna talk about um, but i am addicted to shit talking and i want to do it about this trip and i loved it everything was great for the record but i have opinions about certain people and certain things and i want to share them and that's that so i do like him <laughs> And then I do, I do. I'm being such a bitch. I didn't even speak to him. I know. He he was a nice guy, but you love opinions and and both of us collectively love to spread misinformation. (laughs) Oh my God. Okay, into our next topic here. We are the misinformation rumor mill. And you guys know that. Before we tell you what we spread, I need you guys to understand this, okay? Camp Shady Birch is an eclectic group of very special individuals. Very specific individuals. We have specific senses of humor. And if this van, if the bus, if this coach bus was filled with Camp Shady Birch attendants, everyone would rip roaring laughing the entire time. But like I said, the crew was a mixed bag. It was kind of dry. So when we're joking, I don't think people know that we're joking. Sometimes I don't know if we're joking, to be fair. But the campers know. Right, right. And most of the stuff that comes out of our mouth, if it's stupid, it's literally like, why? that's so dumb. Why are you saying what you're saying? Well, what happened? So we're sitting on the bus. And also, we were a little delusional. It was a very long day. Every day in Disney on these trips is a very long day. Yeah, not complaining, but just kind of putting you into where our headspace was at. We had been in the parks hella early, and it was after the park had closed. And we were leaving, and we're on the bus. And and we are giggling. Everyone else is kind of like quiet, keeping to themselves. No music is playing. And we're just like giggling and kikiing. And I'm looking over the, um, what's it called? The itinerary for the next day. Yeah. So I'm looking over it, and I'm like, what's going on? Like, what's for breakfast? What's on the menu? And I... I don't know why I did that. Well, I do know why. So we were going to like Woody's Roundup, which is a new... Um, barbecue restaurant for lunch. Yes, a new barbecue restaurant for lunch that isn't open yet. And I saw the word breakfast a couple lines above that. So I don't know why. I just started telling everybody on the bus we were going to be having a barbecue breakfast. And everybody's like, what? That's like so weird. And I'm cackling, right? I'm like, we're going to do brisket benedicts. We're going to have barbecue sauce, sausage rolls and scrambled eggs. And I'm, we're shouting this. We're being stupid. And then there starts to be like this murmuring and chatter people being like ew a barbecue breakfast yeah people are like why are we having a barbecue breakfast and then we're like we're just joking and then it's like crickets like they were not having it they were not having it. <laughs> I mean, uh, we also wait no we didn't say we were joking oh it did come out when i was talking to the girl in front of us i was like oh it was all a joke and people were listening oh by the time the rumor mill hit the back of the bus we got off the bus and people were like yeah i guess we're having a barbecue breakfast tomorrow and i said well you know what that's how rumors start and i just think Whoever started that needs to be a, put in the ban. There was a few because Tony on the right of us, he thought it was funny because Tony, he does like those really funny like wig videos too. Hey, Tony TV. And he's a comedian. Yeah. So he thinks it's funny. Okay. Yeah. The comedians think it's funny. We're just joking. It but is stupid though. Some of the vloggers and Twitch streamers like can't be bothered with my energy. And I, I felt it. I'm I, sorry. I said to one to someone on this trip. Who? I was standing there and I had trash in my pocket and I I was like a little, I don't know if I was anxious getting on a ride or what, but I was playing with the trash in my pocket and it was the same three pieces. I didn't realize that I had been doing it all day. Like gum wrappers. Yeah. And there was like a piece of plastic that was digging into my finger. I was like, ow, I guess I have been playing with this all day. So I pulled it out of my pocket and I have trash in my hand and I'm like, I've been playing with this trash in my hand all day. She looked at me and she's like, are you okay? Like, are you good? And I was like, oh, this is like not... (laughs) <laughs> I'm like, yeah, no, I'm, I mean, like, I'm fine right now. Mentally, I'm not sure. But that really just knocked me down a couple pegs. I thought it was silly. If somebody did that to me, I'd giggle. Yeah, not our normal crew. It's okay. So the next day, we do get to the breakfast that is not a barbecue breakfast. And we all kind of shuffle into this, like, closed off area for the content creators. And they have a buffet. And we're sitting and we're chatting with other creators there. And all of a sudden, Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Incredible come out in their full costumes. What are they called? Like the face costumes? Like 
What is that? Like, I think they're just the character. Yeah, just the character costumes. Yeah. And they're looking incredible. Incredible, Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> And so they're like, okay, does anyone want a picture? Jonathan and I almost fell out of our chairs <laughs> running up as if as if they were like, everyone's going to get an opportunity here. Why did we leave? I don't know, but the girl, the girl was like, I, can you guys stand over here? Like, we're not trying to like have an avalanche of people running. We're like, so sorry, I just really want to meet Mrs. or Mrs. Parr. Like, they're super cool. Seen their movies before. We were just really excited to go see them. So when we get up there, they have like a, a helper there that takes our phone, take the photo for us. Yeah. And before before we talk about this, you need to know that if you want to take a picture with a character or anybody, you have to have a vision in your head of what you want it to look like. Because when you run and don't think, you end up getting the photo that Jonathan and I got with Mr. and Mr. Incredible. Mr. and Mrs. Incredible. It was the dumbest, weirdest photo I've ever taken in my life. Well, I will just say... So when we stood up there, Mr. Incredible, I don't know if he couldn't, his ego's too big because he couldn't see much out of that head. Stop it. He pulled me over to the side a little bit more and I tried to pull him over to where you you Sexy. two were standing because you guys were like on and popping and me and him were like, I don't know, it's like the masculinity thing. It's a little hard for me to fit in sometimes. We didn't have much to talk about. So he, pu- he kept pulling me over and I kept trying to pull him over. This picture, you guys, we are at least a quarter of a mile apart from each other and in the worst, most awkward poses and everybody... Every single person, every influencer, their plus ones, family vloggers galore. It no music, very quiet, staring at us, and this very awkward. It couldn't have been longer than thirty seconds, but it felt like thirty minutes. Everybody's staring. It's giving Avril Lavigne meet and greet photo. Like we are so far apart. So when we get, <laughs> when we take the photo. We didn't even know. I didn't even know it was going bad. And then she gives me the phone back, and she's like, "Here you go." And we sit down and we look at the photos. I was like. I couldn't crop this to save my life. There is no fixing this. Not only are we nine miles apart from each other, I'm giving the weirdest profile of my body I've ever seen. It's giving me body dysmorphia. I want to start crying. It's just, it's awful. So I was like, we have to fix this. I was like, you know what? This is the content. So we got back in line. Mm -hmm. We (laughs) got back back in line. line. And I chose a a selfie style photo. Mm -hmm. And campers, if you're ever in this situation, don't be afraid to approach the selfie. Because the selfie... It's cute. And we'll put the pictures up on YouTube so you can see. The selfie was adorable. And we did one with Goofy, too, where it was a selfie. I think they're cuter. Like, I think unless, so, too. Unless you do have, like, a whole fit going on. I think sometimes it's important to have the outfit head to toe. We were not. Like, we were good. We were yeah. set with, like, a selfie, and, and it did end up being cute. But that first one was, like, that makes me nauseous to think about. You know who looks good, though? Who? Mrs. Parr. Why do you call her that? That's her name in the movie. Why don't we just call her Mrs. Incredible? Because we're friends now. Okay, well, I didn't know her name was Mrs. Parr. That's a horrible ass name, the Parrs? Yeah, the Parr family. Oh, okay. Well, so then after breakfast, what do you do with a full stomach? You go on Tower of Terror, obviously. (laughs) (laughs) And then after Tower of Terror, we're in, um, where is this? Hollywood Studios. Hollywood Studios. We're walking back, and you see a little caricature stand, which I've only done one when I was a kid. Have you ever got one done? Yeah, and you don't like them because you think they're going to pick on you, but that's only certain ones. Some of them are really cute. Like the Disney one's not going to pick on you're you. You're so right. And right when you said that, I realized I was like, oh my god, you're so right. They're not going to make me have buck teeth. They're not going to make fun of my long face. They're not going to make fun of my big pores, which usually they would do. And hey, I have tough skin, but it can only take so much. Obviously. I know. So we go and we get this caricature done, and we're trying to we're flipping through the little flip book of suggestions that they have, and they we suck. Yeah, I mean, it's for like the lesser creative people, and like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Knock it off. So I was like, well, what do, what do we love that's like not content based? Like, I don't want to be in a picture of us like holding microphones as much as we love doing this. So I was like, well, we both love pizza. So yeah. can you put us on pizza? And the girl's like, yeah. And she took our little toppings down. We did pineapple, pepperoni, and mushroom. I think that was it, right? Yeah, which we, I've never seen either of us ever get mushroom on a pizza. But you were really adamant about the mushroom. Well, in my head, I was thinking it's going to look a little weird if it's just pineapple and pepperoni i was like we need a classic shape in there and i hate olives yeah it doesn't look yeah anyways keep going so we get it done and then i'm loving the picture we'll put a picture of it up right here the picture is stuntalina it was one of the best characters i've ever gotten done i've gotten a couple done actually i love them um and it was just so cute because our faces are on the pepperonis it's so cute and adorable but the problem is you guys this day 
started at 7.30 and we were going to practically midnight. And it was 10.30 at the time, which means that we had to carry around this caricature all day. It's not heavy at all, by all means, right? It's really it's really light, but it's kind of a big piece of paper attached to cardboard in a plastic bag. And it's just a lot to kind of like hold all day. Yeah. Especially for like a, what an 18 hour day. And we weren't going back to the hotel. We couldn't go back no, to the hotel if we to wanted hotel. to which at one point I did want to just to put this down because it's, you know, I'm carrying it around everywhere. So I'm making sure Zach's offering to carry it. And I'm like, no, like, you're, I got it. I'll handle it. We're fine. I did offer. You did multiple times. And you did hold it for a little bit. We'll get back to that. So I'm holding, we go on, um, what is the, what's the one that we love? Guardians of the Galaxy, which does all these flippity dippity doos. And I, li I am not getting this thing bent. I put it on the floor. I put my feet over it and I lift my feet gently. So it's just the weight of my shoes, not the weight of my body holding it i'm going up upside down with this thing i'm holding on to it for dear life upside down yes on it, the it does guardians not, of the galaxy it does not go upside down baby. it did in my head okay it we, it flips pretty hard but it doesn't go upside down we went on space mountain with it we i went had on, my feet on it and guess what the weight was completely down on it. yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was gorgeous and the thing is though then we're getting to the whole reason why we're at the event yeah right is for this tron party okay so we're heading to from Epcot to oh no we're heading from that party they threw like an a before party before the Tron event at the Contemporary Hotel yeah for the creators we're still lugging this thing around I have it leaned against the wall then we head to the Tron the event. bartenders held up for us at one point please bartenders just hold the card pull the card um they did so they held the picture for us so we get to the Tron event and they literally drive us in through the middle of Disney World like in this back way all the way to the to the start of Tomorrowland like you could never get a car in there unless you yeah. need people it's not the normal entrance and it's this giant party with all of the influencers so many people from the media yeah. like the news stations and then like, Disney food box Disney food blog. I love them. I follow them everywhere. I can't figure out. I couldn't figure out who it was that was there. So it's, it's like a faceless account for the most part. And, I, and they were there. They were standing next to us. I I couldn't tell you who it was. But well, they, they were there. Mm -hmm. And then cast members were also there, but not at the Tron party. They were at like the fireworks after. So the Tron party was really lit. Like if you saw my Instagram story, I was pop blocking and dropping it with Donald Duck. Yes, you were. I was shaking my ass with um, Goofy, Goofy, mm -hmm. Goofy Goober. And um, they had like an ice sculpture with shrimp. They had mac and cheese stations, free liquor. And it's just like a stroll party. And we're in tomorrow. Orleans, so all the rides are operational. You got Space Mountain, you got the People Mover, and then we watch the grand opening or like this celebration opening of Tron. Yeah. Who comes walking out of Tron beforehand? JoJo Seawater. JoJo Seawater was in attendance, everybody. Nickelodeon superstar JoJo Siwa. Um, she was there, and then we rode the ride. And the ride was super fun. Right. But before we get on the ride, I again have this caricature that's in a plastic bag. And they, you put it in a locker and the locker opens on the other side. I close the locker. It gets caught in there. I almost rip it taking it out. I completely demolish the handle. Then we go about our way. I'm holding it like this. It's like it's like a little rag. I'm dragging around by my, my index finger and my thumb. Yeah. And then I took it and I was like, I'm going to hold it. And then I tied it up a little bit to make a little handle. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, campers. We started at 7.30, and I'm not trying to complain, all right? But we've been on our feet for 17 hours straight at this point. No breaks, walking, and I think we walked 15 miles in total that day. Yeah. So my legs were, like, shaking by the time we got to the fireworks, but we got to see this, like, crazy show that used to be there, and it got brought back, and it was stunning, okay? But to the, do— The fireworks show. Yeah, yeah. the fireworks yeah. show. So, but at, that was back near the castle, and if you mm -hmm. know Disney World, Tomorrowland's, like, a different area. So after—before we went to the fireworks, show we sat down at a table for like five minutes we're like please chill kick our feet up and then we're like it's time for the fireworks so we get all the way to the fireworks and then we realize during the fireworks show who's holding the caricature who's holding the caricature neither of us i left i zachariah porter left the caricature at that little high top table in the tron party on a ledge in a closed area to the public now. Mm -hmm. And I, we looked at each other and we said, what can we do? They're not going to let us back over there. We're over here now, hopefully lost and found. But we just couldn't get it back. We couldn't get it back. We went to Lost and Found the next day. And I was like, how can I be upset in the happiest place on earth? But it was it was funny. We like lugged it around all day. And it's clearly ours. It's our face and our name on it. So if somebody was going to find it, they'd be like, oh, it's very clearly y'all. The Disney attendant that was working Lost and Found, she's like typing it in the computer. And she goes, do you know caricature is two words? 
I was like, baby girl, are you I was sure? Like, no, it's not. And I was like, oh, really? And she's like, yeah. And I like look at myself. I'm like, it's absolutely one word. And it is one word. But that's what <laughs> makes me think that when she put it in the system and searched it, <gasps> she couldn't find it because she typed in a two word word that wasn't real. Well, she did go look in the back. Yeah, but how much stuff was there back there? Should I call? I don't know. Well, oh, I wish. It's probably in Disney Springs by now. They have a holding spot at Disney Springs. If anybody comes across it, please let us know. I know. But it was a picture of us on pepperoni pizza. And it was going to go right on the wall behind us. Oh, my God. I didn't know we were going to put it in here. We were going to put it in here. <laughs> I forgot about that bar. Okay. So it was the best thing that never happened. You know what I can do? We can take a... We took pictures of it. What if I take a picture of it and just print that? I would love it if it would work. Yeah. It, we'll try it. It's got some glare from the plastic bag in it, but we're going to do our best and then we'll see what we can come up with. That would be nice. I'll make, I'll make some time to go to a Kinko's or something. Well, there was so much fun stuff on this trip. We already have um, a, a BuzzFeed quiz eating at Grand Floridian already up. And while it's, by this time this airs, the 17 minute vlog will be up. Um, so Patreon's a really popping spot. And please let us know if you have any in questions about how these influencer trip works, any behind the scenes Disney questions that we can answer. That's gonna be up on Patreon next week at patreon.com slash camp counselors. Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Morning announcements. So before we get into the morning announcements, I have a little bit of housekeeping, more of like a revisit to last episode. I did have a camper write into us. So last episode, I mentioned I'm allergic to a lot of medications. Like I can't take painkillers. I can't take NSAIDs. I can't take like acetaminophen or things that don't, that aren't NSAIDs, but are still like blood thinners or painkillers. I can't take any of them. I have the same allergic reaction across the board. So this camper wrote in and she said, good morning counselors. As I'm driving to my shift at the hospital, I'm listening to episode 27. I was upset to hear uh, poor counselor Jonathan was struggling with hangover treatment options. I was moved to share with you and all campers, the best hangover prevention used in hospitals everywhere. Activated charcoal, you can buy it in little capsules. Take two after a night on the town with a big bottle of water. It'll soak up all the alcohol while you sleep. You'll wake up feeling refreshed and have a nice big black poop in the morning. <laughs> Yay. You're going to try that. Yeah, I'm going to try it. So thank you, um, Nurse Lindsay from the first aid tent. I greatly <laughs> appreciate that because I'm going to give that a go. I feel like maybe a lot of people had already known that, but I didn't know it. I didn't know that either. So thank you. Thank you, Nurse Lindsay in the infirmary tent. Yeah, I'm going to give that a try. I feel like at least it's something. It's something. Um, okay, so morning announcements. Do you uh, you want to go first? You should go first. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. My guys, my uh, I also just came back from a bachelorette that I'll talk about next weekend. I my look, did you, hear my, you hear my voice? I sound like a raspy jazz singer. So I just need a minute to rest my vocal cords. <laughs> Goes to Nola once, comes back sounding like a jazz singer. Okay. <laughs> All right. So my article is titled "World Renowned TikToker Punches Mickey Mouse at Disneyland." Please, it was not me. So when I read that title, I was like, "Oh my god, this happened like while we were there. What did we miss?" Turns out, it wasn't Disney World. It was Disneyland. And um, do you want to take? I'll give you one guess. Do you want to take a guess at who it was? Logan Paul. No. Who? Do we know them? The TikToker in question is 20-year-old Hasbula. Hasbula punched him? So if you guys don't he's know. He's 20? Yeah, he's 20 years old. He's No a, way. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh my God. He's a content creator. His name is Hasbula. He, um, I'm not sure what medical condition he has, but he appears to look like a child, but he's really 20 years old. So in this video, he's at Disneyland with all of his friends who are filming him, obviously. He just runs up to Mickey at a meet and greet and starts acting like a like a complete asshole. He just, start, you, cause you know how he acts like with his friends. That's what he's doing here. He's like sticking his head in the eye, trying to see whoever's face. He's grabbing at the nose. He's trying to lift the mask up. And then he starts like kneeing him in the face, like whoever's in this this costume. And if they don't know who Hasbulla is, they're probably like, why, why is this kid going absolutely gnarly on me with the strength of a 20 year old? So then he like finally gets him to like calm down, shake his hand. They go to say bye. He does goes to do fist pump and he kicks his hand. Hasbulla kicks the Mickey's like hand, like kicks it hard. Is he getting charges pressed against him? Probably not. But they posted and everyone in the comments is like, can he just not start beef with anybody? People were like, it was silly to a lot of people. But I'm like that whoever's, I mean, I don't want to ruin the magic, but whoever's in that Mickey costume was like, y'all are not paying me enough for this shit. Like, what's I going on? No, it was like a probably like twenty year old kid. It's like Hasbula, please. I know, and I I do like him. I think he's funny. I think he's entertaining. He's silly, but like, can you just not act like an asshole at Disney? He doesn't look like a child. He looks like a toddler. Yeah. So that probably, if you didn't know who he was, he probably thought it was an actual child. <clears throat> yeah, and he's like, why is he strong? Oh my god, I always thought he was Russian. He is. 
And he just lives in America now? No, he doesn't live here. They were visiting to go to Disneyland. All for that bit. Yeah, but probably. probably went viral. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm just glad. I was like, who could this have been after reading that title? And as soon as it said hospital, I was like, absolutely no way. And there's a video. I will put it on um, on YouTube and I'll show you after this. But that's my morning announcement. <laughs> <laughs> you have one? Uh, my morning announcement is also giving a little bit of international flavor. So earlier this year, um, the city of Newark, New Jersey, signed a sister agreement with a country. The country's name was, um, it's K-A-I-L-A-S-A. Kalasa, Kalasa. Um, it's the United States of Kalasa. And they signed an agreement basically saying that they were going to be sister cities and it was kind of going to like help with international affairs and just show that they're um we are all internationally connected. Kind of like a photo op, kind of like a humanitarian situation. Sure. Um, it was enacted for about eight days until someone at the Newark uh, mayor's office realized, oh shit. The United States of Kalesa is actually a fake country. Okay, love that. Yeah, so no one at the office did a quick Google search. So essentially, this this country of Kalesa is a fabrication of this guy named Swami Nithyanda. Nithyanda. Um, I'm sorry, we'll put the name out there so you can see the article. I cannot pronounce that. <laughs> so you can avoid him. He's a Hindu guru, guru who fled India in 2019 when he was being accused of assault and rape. Sorry, he's a bad guy. And, you know, he really is. So he's been kind of like on this quest to start this new nation. There's been talks that he owns an island off of Ecuador. Ecuador is like, that's not true. But he's saying it is true. And two women representing this like mythical country showed up to Newark. And they were like garbed in what looked like to be like traditional clothing and jewelry for the ceremony. And one of them gave like an eight minute speech um, before the city council thanking Newark um, for the partnership and speaking of creating an enlightened Hindu civilization. So they're thinking it's like a little photo op. The 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 mayor's office is like this is great. It ends up being like so fake. So they like abolish they like demolish it or whatever. And they're like it's it's not real. The city told CBS in a statement that the signing was a regrettable incident, but that it remains committed to partnering with people from diverse cultures in order to enrich each other with connectivity, support, and mutual respect. No money was involved in the signing of the ceremony per CBS. That's embarrassing. It is embarrassing that like that fell through the holes. Like no one just did a quick Google search. So if you search that name, temples do come up. There's a couple of temples, but it's not a city. And there should have been some more research. Yeah, how many people are on that board that really could have just done a little bit more than two minutes of looking at Google images to see if it exists? Yeah, so you know that when the mayor, so the mayor of Newark is Ross Baraka. So when he goes back up for like re-election, they're going to be like, Ross, oh, this isn't looking good. It's really not. But they have this like crazy Twitter too, where it's like promoting the country. And they somehow were at like a, a UN convention in Geneva with their name on like a little plaque. And they went to these like two different like appearances um, claiming to represent um, Calicia or whatever. And a spokesperson from the UN was like basically saying that um, like the, everything that we're saying like didn't make sense and they weren't relevant to the meetings. But I don't know how they were still, how are they even there? How yeah. did they get into there? Can't you? They should be like red flagged or something. It was the same women that were at the Newark one. These two women are like the the front facing like people oh. of of the country, and they snuck into these kind of like photo ops with different like leaders from different countries, like a bunch of different countries, like UAE, Gambia, Bangladesh, Equatorial Guinea, Montenegro, Lebanon, Lithuania, Egypt, and um. Burundi. So now when you like go to look them up, they have, it looks like they have credibility. That's scary. Exactly. So they look like they were like credibly like world leaders when they're in yeah. this fake nation. So I think New York went to the Twitter and was like, oh, they're at the UN, but it's like, go to Google, babe. Yeah, get off Twitter. Go just look it up, fact check it. Don't you, I feel like they have like, like a, a what's it called? The internet, the, the like underground internet that the government uses. Like you can just like do a couple of searches on whatever that's called. I know. Um, so the, organ the organization's founder has claimed that Kalesia is now issuing tourist visas, has a currency, and has established embassies around the world, though it has no internationally recognized territories. The guru also claims to be able to disprove Einstein's theory of relativity and possesses paranormal uh, abilities. Oh. So it's giving cult. Yeah. That got through to Newark. 
like Newark must be so, you know what? Florida, congrats. Cause Florida's like, thank God. Okay. Give, get the heat on New Jersey for a minute. They're like the heroes of this episode. The New, New Jersey kind of is the Florida of the Northeast. I can agree it to kind, an extent. It I can kind agree. Of is. I can agree. Well, Newark, um, we love you. You're crazy. You're goofy, and you don't research. You sound <laughs> a lot like the camp counselors here. So, um, if the mayor wants to come visit, he's welcome. But not not the founder of that nation. He is not welcome here. Grab your bug juice and bear spray, campers. It's time to pack it up and take a hike. Welcome back to Take a Hike. This is the part of the show where we bitch a little, we rant, we rave, mostly just rant and, and do some bitching. So what have what's been what's been grinding my gears this week? Um, the fact that most buildings don't have a 13th floor. I just think that's really annoying. I think it's really immature. I uh, I think if you're on the 14th floor and there is no 13th floor, babe, you're, babe, you're on the 13th floor. So the original reason that they stopped doing it back in the day was because people were like superstitious, right? I don't know. I think that that's why, because people were like, oh, 13's a unlucky number. Like, let's not stay on the 13th floor. And so many places just skip it. Like, most hotels don't have a 13th floor. And I'm like, you guys, come on. It's 2023. Just stop building buildings and calling the 14th floor the 13th floor. Your 28-story building is actually 27, babe. So stop marketing it as such. It's a lie. I just think I'm going to keep it short and sweet this week. It's just annoying to me because I would love to stay on the 13th floor. Are there any buildings that have a 13th floor? Or is it, I thought it was like, I don't, I think all buildings don't have 13th floors. Like they don't list it. Most, yeah, most of them don't. So if you're going on the floor, it's still the 13th floor. What are you just, everybody's just going to lie to themselves and just go ahead and skip right over the fact that it goes 12, 14. Yeah, that is annoying for you. What if, just for me specifically, what if it opens to the 13th floor and there's just like nothing there? That's why they skip it in the elevator. It's why it's a little longer when you go through those two floors. So, okay, wait, what if there is a 13th floor and all of these buildings, they're just empty? Uh, maybe it's the maid's quarters. It could be, but they would probably have bad luck there. I would love to be a maid in the maid's corner just for a day. With just some, for a day. Strip some beds and some fresh linen. You'd see a lot of shit. I want to wear that traditional maid costume. Oh, that's sexy. That's sexy. And I'm like, oh no, I dropped something. Your feather duster. Feather dusters didn't do anything. Did you ever have one? I did. I thought it worked well. No, it, it just pushed it right around. Oh, I think I'm thinking of a Swiffer duster. Look, those handheld dusters. Those will, will cling. Those cling. They use static charged cling to hold and then lock the dust. Light, side note, you guys. Guys, make sure you're dusting your fans. We've been checking the camps, and I'm noticing that a lot of the ceiling fans are disgusting. So campers, get out there this week with your feather dusters that were given to you by Sandwich in your Easter baskets, and you <laughs> are going to dust your fans. Because when was the last time you did it? Think, think to yourself. Look up at the sky. I'm seeing some dust. Uh, yeah. It, it gets like black around the other. It almost looks like mold, you guys. And then when you catch it for the first time, when you see like when you see a dirty ceiling fan in your house and you catch it, you're like, oh. <gasps> I'm filthy. Yeah. <laughs> and then you dust it off and it falls onto your bed. Have you had that happen to you? I learned online a while ago on TikTok, like years ago, that you can take a pillowcase and you, you put it <sighs> over it and you pull it back and all the dust falls into the pillowcase. That is so smart. It sometimes works. You have to have a really, you have to have a good <clears throat> grip on it. You know what I mean? If you're too far away from it, you can get a little messy. Wear a mask, guys. And then maybe wash the pillowcase. Don't just use it immediately after. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's the 13th floor. I'm going to tell to take a hike. Love that. What about you? What's uh, grinding your gears? What's really grinding my gears this week? What's really annoying me is, you know when you're in a group space and there's some sort of host and he asks the group, he goes, is everyone having a good time tonight? And then everyone goes, ooh. And then they go, let me try that again. Is everybody having a good time tonight? It's like, can you shut the fuck up, please? First of all, if I wanted to contribute to the first woo, I would have wooed. I would have wooed the wooed house down, okay? But when you want to run that one back to me, it's the most stale, boring bit in the entire bunch, okay? You know what you should do? Captivate an audience. If I really wanted to listen, I would be listening. Doesn't mean I'm not like paying attention, but I'm sorry that if I'm on a bus ride and the bus driver asks us on the way to Disney if we're having a good time and I didn't throat scream, you have to run that one back. And that bus driver did it like eight times throughout the trip. He took us on the longest journey to our hotel. He's dropping everybody off. And there's two groups left in the hotel. It's us and Casey's corner behind us <laughs> with her kids. And he's like, 
is everyone having a good time ready for Disney? And then we're just tired at this point. And he's like, I'm going to say it again. I'm like, will you just drive and stop clocking in as the entertainer? Because I don't want to do this anymore. Because then the second one, then I'm forced to do it. <laughs> but it's not just him. It's everywhere you go nowadays. Any sort of public speaking event, everybody has to run that. That wasn't good enough. Let's get it louder. It's like, let's just actually entertain. Let's get to the point. Because now you're irritating me. Like Mariah Carey. No, no, no. You don't want to hear about 9-11. <laughs> <laughs> so she captivated the audience at a very mumbled decibel. Yeah, exactly. But everyone was paying attention at that mm -hmm. point. So say something controversial if you really want to grab the attention of the audience. Don't make them cheer for you twice. Ugh. Take a hike. Do you think the new counselor likes the top bunk or the bottom bunk? Over. Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle keychain. Over. I want to kiss you, my Really miss you. <laughs> the rasp I am giving is giving Miss Norjon. It certainly is. It's almost like she was in this very room with us. Welcome back to Crush of the Week. Jonathan, who are you giving your silly little boondoggle keychain to this week? Who gets the honorary camper crush of approval? Well, I don't think this is going to be a surprise to you. And I don't remember who my crush was on episode one. I wouldn't be surprised if it was the same person. No, I don't think I did this before. But my crush is going out to Clarabelle Cow. Now, does anybody fucking remember Clarabelle Cow from Disney? You guys, I've asked large groups of people and many people haven't remembered her. We saw her in the parade, but she's a cow in the Mickey universe and she was really tight with them. So anyway, I decided to do some research because I last time we were there and we were at that um, dining with the characters and I asked Goofy who came up to our table and I think he knew who you were and who Erica Priscilla were because we were sitting with you guys and he kept making gestures. And I said, okay, we're cool now. Look me in the eyes. Where's Clarabelle? What did you do with Clarabelle? And it, it was like a topic I couldn't talk about. He was whisked away in like a fish net. Clarabelle's an ugly character, and I think it's why she doesn't get any airtime. That is really rude. So I, I also just want to start with, I went hunting in every gift shop just for a little something because they have pins of the most crazy side character that's like the Lilo and Stitch uh, stuffed animal voodoo doll thing. Like she has her own dessert made after her. I'm like, they have to have one goddamn Clarabelle pin. Just one pin. That's all I want. A pen even. I'll take it. A pencil. I don't care. They have nothing abs zip absolutely nothing so i did my research you guys because i want to see what what happened to clarabelle and i need justice for her so turns out she was in the very first mickey mouse cartoon ever not steamboat willie but mickey mouse the very first one it was mickey mini clarabelle so she's an og oh she was in the top three yes in 1928 uh so then after that february 16th 1931, Time Magazine publishes an article. It's titled, Cinema, Regulated Rodent. And this is exactly what they said verbatim. Motion picture producers and distributors of America last week announced that because of complaints of many censor boards, the famed uttered cow of a Mickey Mouse cartoon is now banned. Cows in Mickey Mouse or other cartoon pictures in the future will have small or invisible udders, quite unlike the organ whose antics of late have shocked some and convulsed others at who basically they were saying that this girl, her udders were so jarring that they had to put out this whole thing being like, we can't show those big old titties. Her udders were jarring. You showed me a picture of them back in the day. The way they were illustrating them was scary. And it, it was, was because hurtful. she, there was a part in here. It said in a recent picture, the udder besides flying violently to left and right or stretching. This is somebody's writing this on a goddamn typewriter in 1931. I'm not making this up. Um, besides flying violently left to right or stretching far out behind when the cow was in motion, heaved when it's panting when the cow stood still. So they're basically like it's seizing in an exaggerating way. It's stretching. It's literally flopping all over the place. Like it's phallic and it looks like a giant breast uh, because it's an udder. Okay. So they're like from here on out, the udders are gone. And it was also confusing because Clarabelle started out as a cow on all fours. And then when she stood up and you can see the udder, they were like, uh-uh. You cannot do that. So she, they ended up having a skirt on her and all this stuff, which I don't know. If you look at her now in how they portray her, I don't know. Her nose is looking a little 
her nose is looking a little suspicious. Don't you think it looks like a breastplate? Well, did it come back in the 80s? Okay, hold on. I'm getting there. Sorry, I was getting a little off track. So in 1930, she gets a skirt to cover her udders. That's not the only thing she gets. She gets a little boyfriend whose name is Horace Horsecollar, who kind of falls off really quickly. So she's a socialite, and that's how they're portraying her. She's Minnie's BFF before Daisy had even come around. Donald was just entering the scene. And then from 1944 to 1983, she was wiped from all Disney, from all cartoons, from all comics. She absolutely nothing for those years. And then she comes back as Goofy's love interest in 1983. Um, and then there's this whole love triangle with the the um, the horse, horse, the horse and Goofy and her. And it's like this whole weird thing. And then she comes into, did you ever watch House of Mouse? No. So I used to watch that um, when my mom would take me out of school when I was pretending to be sick. So she was the Main Street Gossip Girl and she would read all the gossip columns and her she would always say, I make your business my business and gossip is always true. Like, isn't that funny? That's cheeky. It is cheeky. It's S like you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm like making up things on the bus. I am Clara Balcow. Uh, and then also, sorry, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen this flick, uh, The Three Musketeers, back in the day, she was the villain. So they turned her into a villain for a minute. People didn't love that. So they were like, wait, no, 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 she's not a villain. We're going to flip her back, and she's just going to be the gossip, the talk of the town. Um, so now she kind of sits as Minnie and Daisy's BFF in, like, the little kid shows, the um, what's it, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is she is that currently little... on Mickey Mouse Clubhouse? Sometimes. So she they've really, she has a branding crisis, an identity crisis. They don't know where to place her. Yeah, and I don't know why. She got her own float in the um, Halloween parade. Though. She did, and they brought her back last year as um, one of the Sanderson sisters, okay. as like an actual character. And in Disneyland, they just brought um, one, some old character back. I forget who it was, but she was at the front of the parade, but it was only in Disneyland. So I'm in a Facebook group and I put something in there. I was like, where the hell is Clara Bell? And everybody was like, oh, a couple years ago, they had like a pencil case with her face on it. I'm like, you're just pushing my point forward. You know, like I just want some piece of merch with Clara Bell cow. And that's all I'm asking for. So that's the tale of Clara Bell cow. Wow. Are you missing her? I am missing her. I just wanted a little something. And I think it's funny, too, because I was actually watching clips this morning while I was doing my heavy research. And she really was like a gossip. And I think it's like, OK, that Disney kept her at an arm's length. It kind of makes sense because she wasn't like the most trustworthy person. But hey, like not all of us are, you know? Yeah, I want to see a renaissance of her. I like her checkered past. It reminds me a lot of you. Thank you. And I think you both deserve screen time. I just think her history is like really interesting. Like, why aren't we talking more about her? Um, but yeah. So who's your crush of the week? Uh, my crush of the week is going back to where my heart belongs. It's going back to the food category. I love a perfect scoop of mashed potatoes. I know what you're thinking. What makes the most perfect scoop of mashed potatoes? They need to be creamy. Mm. I love it when they have those little bits of potato, especially Red Bliss. And I like it when it's piping hot. You don't want cold mashed potatoes. And while they're, while they're swishing around my mouth, I want to feel as if there was a secret dollop of sour cream in there. There has to be some layer of, oof, the cream. And I had them this week in Disney. You're not going to believe where I had them, campers. Any guesses? Rainforest Cafe right outside of Animal Kingdom. Jonathan and I went there on a little date in between our commitments. And Jonathan was like, please, Rainforest Cafe, Rainforest Cafe, like a child. And I was like, okay, twist my arm. So we sat at the bar and their bar seats are really silly. They are silly. They're like the asses of animals. They have little tails on them. I had a zebra. I ordered chicken tenders and I was like, you know what? I am really entering my any other side than fries era. Fries are just starting to bore me a little bit. Mm. I get a lot of food that comes with fries. I love a sandwich. But now I'm starting to be like, hey, what can I sub it with? So instead of getting the fries, I got the mashed potatoes and they were divine. You had a bite. You liked they were, them. They were surprisingly delicious. To the fact that we went to Rainforest Cafe, one, I didn't think any of them were still open. And two, the fact that they had good food and not only that, but it was like, you said hands down like the best mashed potatoes you've had. I know, but I love to speak in extremities. <laughs> I also think too that I'm I love them so much because I also love to not chew. I'm entering <laughs> that era as well. I'm okay, like the gang, fastest gang. way to the gullet is yeah. for me. Right. You don't even have to chew mashed potatoes. You kind of just like play with them with your tongue for a little bit. Like if you didn't have teeth and use for a mouthful of gums, 
you could eat mashed potatoes all day. Yeah, I guess I never really thought about how I eat mashed potatoes, but you're right. It's really just kind of like, let me just cover the taste buds and send it down. Custard girls love mashed potatoes because we love that consistency. It's all looping together, you guys. I'm making it. I'm connecting the dots. That's why I love mashed potatoes so much. My mother, Susie, makes fantastic mashed potatoes. Hers might be a little bit better. I'm going to give these the best award for mashed potatoes that I've had out of a restaurant. And you know what? They I probably have had better ones, but I think it was so shocking because we were at a Rainforest Cafe. Yeah. And they're not known for their food. No. You know? But it was a great meal. Yeah. I had a Michelob Ultra, my chicken tenders, and a mashed potato. And you know why they were good campers? Because I know what to order at a chain restaurant. You don't go into a Rainforest Cafe and order the shrimp tail with the charcoal filet and the filet of soul. No, you don't get that. You stick to your guns and you get something simple. You're not there for fine dining. You're there for that silly little rainforest experience when that ape is banging his chest and the elephant's got his broken tail going up in the air. <laughs> who's your favorite broken animal on the wall? The snake who's literally been there since the last time I was there in the year 2000 and his head was like jutting around. I was like, he needs WD-40 and a, and a nap. Put him down, please. He was like getting the jitters. I was like, that snake needs to be put out of his misery. Take him off the tree, everybody. Do you remember if they had chives on them, the mashed potatoes? They didn't. Mm. Oh, well, he said that mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. Give me a skip of that mashed potatoes, please. I do like chives. I do like them on mashed potatoes. The best mashed potatoes I ever had, I remember. You love talking about this hand. It was in the Hancock build, this, the, Han, the John Hancock building in Chicago in the signature room. I don't even know if that restaurant's still there, but at like one of the top floors, if not the top floor, of that building was the signature room. Their mashed potatoes. I was a ch- I was a little girl when I had it, and I still remember it to this very day. Hey, I know you love them. You've been talking about those John Hancock potatoes since I've met you. They're good. Uh, I know you love them. But what happened to like Rainforest Cafe? Like, what's going on with them, and why are they disappearing off the face of the earth? I know all of these cool themed restaurants are going down the drain. I grew up with this place, and any campers back home would understand or know what I'm talking about. It was called Bugaboo Creek. Oh. And it was yeah, <laughs> it was the funnest place ever. I had three birthdays in a row there, and they had animatronics on the wall that were like it'd be like a fish on a plaque or like a moose it was giving like almost log like rainforest cafe but in a log cabin oh. and the animals spoke and they'd have a little show and at the next to the host stand was a big christmas tree like a pine tree and all of a sudden its eyes would come out and he would start talking you couldn't tell seven-year-old me that was the best thing in the world i went three years in a row for my birthday bugaboo creek but it's gone um, They're all gone. And you know what they've been replaced with? What? Those nasty bar restaurants that have the smash burgers and the exposed beams and those metal high top chairs. That you have to stick your hand in to move it back. And you God knows how many like straight men have blasted farts into that little nasty oh, hole. Oh, God. And they're like, guess what we got? Trash can nachos. Grow uh, up. Okay? Get some animals back on the walls. Bring in some joy. What's wrong with a splash of color? When did the world trade its fun for industrial trash? I'm sick of it. I want to pop. I want everything to feel like it has expression and joy in it. Fuck your Edison bulbs. Yeah, Edison bulbs. They're in those two, aren't they? In the bin. And it's like, look, it looks like an exposed, I don't know, work site. It's like, it's not giving fun, babe, because this wooden booth is hurting my tailbone. Mm. Oh, God. It's happening to coffee shops and burger joints across America, and we need to figure out how to stop this and bring back the rainforest cafes. What song's been stuck in your head all week? Welcome to Camp Songs. What song's been stuck in your head all week? Wow, we got a lot of feedback that everyone was really liking my little vocal runs. Yeah, I was emotional last week. I thought were. I was stressing people out. I know. And you, I shouldn't have said what I said because you weren't annoying me. But I was like, I wonder if people are getting annoyed at this. And they weren't. We heard you. You've been heard. We're not changing it up. And if you were annoyed by it and you didn't say anything too bad, we're <laughs> keeping the segment titles. Okay? It, yeah, people probably were. And they were like, I'll forever hold my peace. <laughs> um, but the, some of you that really rallied around me and supported these yeah. like, episode openers, the title segment openers yeah we really appreciate it and um this is camp song of the week the songs that we've been humming strumming to and i was gonna say flicking our beans but we don't got those (laughs) what what song are you loving babe so i absolutely love the new miley cyrus album as a whole i love it i don't think i love it as much as her last one plastic hearts 
But it Same. is really good. Um, we have not had a chance to together watch her backyard sessions on Disney Plus. I which know. We will. I watched a couple of, of them with my brother because we were looking for something to watch the other day. But my favorite song is coming off of that album, and it is Wild Card. And I love that song. First off, I think it's silly, and I use that word often. I'm like, oh, you're such a wild card. But I use it in like a... Like something that a librarian would say to another librarian, just being like, <laughs> oh, you got fries instead of mashed potatoes. Nance, you're a wild card. Like in that sense, like nobody really says that, but she did. She sang it and I love it. I'm a wild card. Ooh. Oh, I almost, that was almost Sia. Ooh. Oh, what I like that? that. Oh, yeah, that is Sia. Yeah, but um, it's not not that song. So I'll leave the singing to you. But I just I love that song. It's about like she loves somebody. The love's not enough. And she's just going to keep doing her. She's like, sorry, babe. Like, I was going to meet your mom and I was going to wear a dress that's a little too tight and you don't like that. But I'm just me. I'm a wild card. Like, I love you, but I need you to love me unconditionally in the way that I am. I love that meaning. Yeah. I don't know if that's what she meant, but it just was falling out of my mouth. My brain couldn't catch up. I feel like it makes sense. And I also love that this is the Disney episode and you're talking about a Disney icon. Yeah. Oh, we love you, Hannah Montana. And also, I think it's crazy that she's like back on Disney+. Plus. She's like, uh, the one song that I'm sure... I didn't watch it, so they may have, but I highly doubt they did Handstand. The song about her, like... They'll do them all, babe. They have that whole section now. They did a Dell's whole concert. Was that on there? I think it was. Yeah, but Handstand, where she's talking about, like, jerking somebody off while, like, upside down. Flicking her bean? It, yeah. She's like, he's surprised I can do it on my fucking Handstand. I'm like, oh my god. Oh, we'll have to watch. We'll have to get back to you guys on that one. But yeah, I really want to watch it. The album's amazing. It's, I think it's good. It's not as good as Plastic Hearts, mm. right? But there is some really great songs on it, and that's an album that when you keep listening to it, you like it more and more every single time, I would yeah. say. You know who would love to perform Handstand at Disney? Who? Clara Bell. Oh my god, <laughs> okay. Clara Bell. I'm sorry. <laughs> With her udders out. We're never gonna, sorry. I take it back. I retract that statement. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna stop while I'm ahead. Remember when we said that we weren't gonna be controversial about Disney on here because we wanted to get back invited to these brand trips? Yeah. And you started to do a deep dive into Clara Bell's udders and the censorship of the media against them? Clara Bell Gate. <laughs> Clara Bell Gate. Big Clara Bell is on the scene. <laughs> Okay. All right. I'm going to knock it off. What song has been stuck in your head all week? This is Clarabelle's favorite song because she is a country lover. <laughs> oh, God. My favorite song or my camp song of the week is um, it's called Blindsided by Miss Kelsey Ballerini. Mm. First of all, I love that name. So what? I was just going to say, I, I, it works better than Kelsey Tap Dancerini. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, it definitely has more of a ring to it. Mm -hmm. Maybe the pointed toes. Um, it's track five <laughs> off of a Rolling Up the Welcome Mat EP. So um, I am not a country lover per se. I'll say that out loud. But if I am going to listen to country, it's going to be a woman in country, okay? I am pro-woman always. And this girl has been a mega star in the country scene for a long time. And for the campers that are country fans listening, you already know what I'm going to say. You're hip to the scene. You're aware. But if there's people out there that are like me who don't necessarily gravitate to country, this is an EP that you should check out. It's about 20 songs. And recently, she has just gotten divorced from her other country star, um, husband Morgan Evans and this is kind of a whole album about the divorce and it's written so beautifully and there's one thing you know about me is that I love sad music and this is a gut-wrenching six-track EP about 20 minutes that really kind of tells the tale of how this relationship fell apart mm -hmm. and it really is just so well written and the music almost is borderlining like country pop now like it's got a little bit of a bass to it and a beat to it so it's a little bit more of a transcend and she made a 20 minute video for for that that's like all it's like a movie that can, can play like um compiles all the songs you said 20 you meant 20 minutes not 20 song ep oh no 20 minutes so okay. 20 minutes of the six songs okay gotcha. yeah it's like a movie um it in the song's hook, Bellarini wonders if her partner was truly blindsided by the split or just blind. And I'll read you the chorus. And it's I love the way she writes it. It's just, it's so good. And I can't sing it because my voice is so raspy. And I'm definitely giving more Nora Jones and not really Kelsey Bellarini today. But she's like, I know that you're saying that you're lost and that's lost on me. You didn't even want to leave the house. I didn't want a family. I know the truth is hard to hear, but it wasn't hard to find. Baby, were you blindsided? 
or were you just blind? Mm. So she dropped this EP on Valentine's Day. <gasps> Power move. Wow. And it's just, it's it's really funny because like she didn't want to have kids and he wanted to have kids. And that's where like the disconnect happened. Like I think her career is really hitting this continued upswing for her. And her husband's like, oh, I'm ready to have kids now. And she's like, oh, baby, I'm ready to be a superstar. And it was really sad. And she kind of just kind of goes through the motions of like what a divorce feels like. And the tweet that she posted when the album dropped, or the EP dropped on Valentine's Day, I said, here's my healing journey. Here's my heart. Here's my truth. I've never been this open. I've never been this bold. And I've never been this proud of my art. So with love and respect, I'm rolling up the welcome mat. Six story song and short film out now. Happy Valentine's Day. Incredible. I love, she's such a good writer too. I feel like a lot of country artists, country women, I should say. Mm -hmm. And this is, I'm not knocking everybody like uh, Luke Combs, but. Um, that was a fun one to pick. Yeah. Is that a, is he a country artist? I don't know. I just never, I've never heard of that name before. Okay. Well, Luke Combs, but Kelsey Brushes, baby, because she had it going on with her <laughs> lyrics. Because mostly for the men, it's like, got him driving down the dirt road i got a beer in a console and it's like as much as i do like that song and i i will sing it and i will perform like her the way she lyrically writes things it's like ooh, like you get it the rhyme choices so good that's a it's a good ep were you blind sorry oh were you just blind when you and i listened to it for the first time there was a couple times where we both were like oh <gasps> I know, cause it's like it's a, it's country music is it's it's ingrained in the art of storytelling. Unlike other genres, country music always does have a real story. Look at Dolly Parton's record; 100%. Like, she's always telling some story. It's mm -hmm. not real half the time, but um, this is really spoken from the heart, and it's really sad. And it's twenty minutes, and if you want to be depressed, and if you want to relate to a woman going through a divorce in a really beautiful way, yeah. And it's it's about it's about finding her love and finding her way through this whole thing. And she's gonna be a rock, and she's gonna be the bigger star of the two. I can feel it, and I'm pro Kelsey. I love her so much, guys. Scary Stories Around the Campfire. Welcome back to Scary Stories Around the Campfire. This is the part of the show where you guys send in emails about your scary stories, embarrassing stories, anything like that. Send it in to campcounselorspod at gmail.com or you can go to campcounselorspodcast.com. The top tab says write in. Just go ahead and give that a little click and you can send it on in. What you doing there? Oh, he has his microphone. Okay, so for the for our audio listeners and for our visual listeners who can't hear him talk because he's now microphone on the ground applying what appears to be my now shared um, vessel of $40 Dior lip oil. How are we feeling about it? You can give me like a nod if you like it. Do you like it? I don't know if I like it or not. I feel like I like it, but I think that it's not what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to stay on longer, and I feel like it kind of like dissipates pretty fast. Yeah. We're looking for the world's best lip oil so that we can look fun, fresh, free, and glossy all day long. I don't like lip gloss. I feel like it's tacky, and I'm looking for like a lip oil. And this one, it's still like a little bit more tacky than I would have liked. Um, but anyway, the girl like kind of bullied me into getting it because they were closed. And I was like, oh my God, I need to find, I was looking for Fenty mm -hmm. and they didn't have it. And she's like, well, we do have Dior. And I'm like, well, I don't know if I want Dior. And then I'm with April and April's just like, well, I think it's a good idea. You really wanted it. And I did. And I didn't want to leave empty handed. So I bought it. And then I walked into a fucking tree. Oh, I know. I have the scar to prove it, guys. I walked into a tree while I was applying my new lip oil. Thank God I didn't drop it, honestly. But Hi to low. You can't really see it with my hat on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anyways, okay, do we that was my scary story. <laughs> do we have a scary story this week? Yes, we do. So this writer writes in, Hi, camp counselors. Camper from day one with the salute thing. So cute. Oh, I salute love that. Emoji. Thank you. And a huge fan of the pod. I had to finally submit my scary story to you. Names have been changed. This is a bit of a long one, but stick with me. Back during my freshman year of college, I went to visit my friend at their insanely fun and very Greek small college. The fraternities always threw theme parties, and I was visiting basically every weekend my freshman year because my college's party scene was not it. That year on Halloween, one of the fraternities had a massive costume party. My gal pals and I went dressed as sexy goldfish. <laughs> Who knows why? Sexy sailor, me, and sexy Jason from Friday the 13th. A very camp shady birch of her. 
We arrive to the party thoroughly pre-gamed and ready to take on some shots, dance, and shake our wabo yabos on the dance floor. <laughs> that is a call out for you, babe. The wabo yabos. <laughs> The night started out amazing. I, the sexy sailor, started dancing with a super cute guy named Jay. I had seen him earlier that day on campus while we were out mingling and was introduced. So we're grinding on the dance floor when out of nowhere, a girl pulls me down by my hair onto the floor and starts screaming at me to get the fuck off her boyfriend. Well, that was fun. So I said something like, sorry, I don't go here. And I walked away from this situation and decided that this dude and his girlfriend were not ruining my night. She didn't know. Honestly, good for you for not letting that ruin your night because that would have ruined most people's nights. So you are in control, Camper, and I love to hear it. My sexy goldfish friend did make a bit of a scene on my behalf. So I (laughs) Camp Shady Birch salute her for that. We love that. (laughs) Uh, my friends and I continued to party in various rooms and until an absolute brawl broke out in the frat lobby. During the fight, one of the guys had his face broken in multiple places, later requiring reconstructive surgeries. Someone's ear was bitten off Mike Tyson style. And needless to say, everyone and their brother were kicked out of the frat and were told to take the party elsewhere. The party's like, for me, the night's over at that point. I'm like, I gotta go. I've never been drunk enough where I'm like, I'm gonna bite someone's ear off. That's a psychopath. Yeah, that's steroids and frat boys. Yep, it is. Sponsored by Bush Light. (laughs) Later that night, we were walking back to the sorority house after leaving a different party when we saw a helicopter with a spotlight circling our (laughs) campus. We found out the next day that Jay, the guy I had been dancing with that night, was a part of the huge fight. He followed one of the guys back to the dorm and shanked him from behind and punctured his lung. So he wasn't, he was like in the fight. He didn't bite the guy's face off, but he followed one of them home and shanked him and punctured his lung. That's like almost like a, like a, like a worse than assault, like second degree murder. Yeah. So oh, he had fled into attempted the- Attempted murder, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, allegedly. We We're going to cover our bases here. Allegedly. Uh, he had fled into the woods, which is where the helicopter was searching. The guy who was stabbed had to be airlifted to a major hospital and thankfully survived. Well, thank God. Blessed be. The next day, we walked to the dorm, the same dorm Sexy Jason lived in, where there was crime scene tape still up, and we saw blood smears and spots all the way down the hall. Jay ended up going to prison. No way. Yeah. I knew it. To wrap this up, three years later, during my senior year at college, I was walking through campus while there was some Bible thumper preacher was spewing hellfire and brimstone between my classes. God, they always did that. They always did that on my campus. It was absolutely obnoxious. When I saw a familiar looking guy, he saw me too and made a slightly confused face. He stopped me and asked if we knew each other. When I asked his name, he said, Jay. My jaw dropped and I told him who I was. He said, It was nice to see me, and all I could say was, didn't you go to prison? (laughs) Like, how awkward. Um, He sheepishly said yes, but he was out on probation now and finishing school. Never in my life did I think I'd ever see that guy again. Over a decade later, that Halloween night still remains one of the craziest nights of my life. Hope you enjoyed my scary story. Love you, counselors. Signed, The Sexy Sailor in Cabin 6. Floor floor 4 on the high rise. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, you are. <laughs> oh, my God. That is crazy. Frat parties? I don't know what that was. Frat parties are scary. I had been to a couple in my day. Had you been? Yeah, I went to one, but it was it was at, it was at um, Providence College, but it wasn't like that, though. Yeah. Our, Their Greek life isn't... I'm sorry, PC. It's not like... that. Was that Southern Greek life? I don't know. She didn't say where. Because, like, the South Greek life is insane. Yeah, it's insane, but I feel like it's a much... Like, obviously, that, this is a bad example, but it's a much cleaner, shinier version of what happened at my school where it was really just, like, very graphic and absolutely disgusting because it was, Ugh. like... It was in, like, North Philly. The house next to us was rented out by one of the frats. I don't think it was official, but it was, like, an abandoned house. And we would go over there because... And that's where I got my, my tooth chipped. Um, because we were, we wouldn't pay for their beer. I didn't want their shitty beer. I just wanted to party, but the, it was just, you know, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it with the guys. I saw some guy, I was talking to him, didn't realize he was peeing in a closet. Why are you thought, talking to him? Yeah. I thought he was just drunk and like swaying back and forth. There was like an abandoned, like the closet didn't have a closet door on it. It was like a coat closet and he was just peeing on the carpet. Ugh. Greek life is scary. Men are scarier camper. Stay away from both. Thank you. And uh, if you guys want that bonus content, which I 
I think you're all going to like go to patreon.com slash camp counselors. Go to camp counselors podcast.com to submit anything that you want, or you can get our bonus content straight from there. And I think that's it. And I'm watching you guys right now and I'm giving you a hefty salute. And with that being said, lights, lights out, out campers. campers.